Okay, let's talk about how to set up a starter hatchling tub. This is meant to be a temporary enclosure for your first month or two um, that you have your new baby ball python, depending on how they adjust. Some need more time in something like this, some need less. This is not meant to be a long-term enclosure or to last them a year. This is meant to be a transitionary enclosure. When it comes to baby ball pythons, transition is very, very important to prevent things like hunger strikes, shedding issues, um, you know, overt stress, respiratory conditions, things like that, that they're very susceptible to, especially in their first year. Now understand when a baby ball python first hatches, it actually spends its first couple of weeks in the burrow where it hatched, you know, huddled up with its siblings until it's shed, until it, you know, gains a little bit of strength and it feels strong and confident enough to venture out and look for its own home and its own food. Um, so this kind of is meant to simulate that. It gives it a secure environment that's not too overwhelming and not too stressful while it's in your new home and it's getting used to you and the new scents and sights and sounds that it will be surrounded with. And then once they've eaten enough and shed enough and you feel like they're ready, you can put this entire tub into your permanent enclosure if you have one. If it's a larger enclosure like a 4x2x2, by two by two, which I know a lot of pet keepers want to use, you can put this right in there and just open the lid and the baby will then transition itself into the larger enclosure when it's ready. Rather than you just getting a brand spanking new hatchling and putting that tiny little thing in this huge new environment and scaring the ever-loving bejesus out of it before it's ready. So, for this setup it's very simple. All that you need is do something that's a little bit more of the classic shoebox size. This is a little closer to hatchling tubs that they start out in here. Um, but if you do get one that has the gasket or some kind of an airtight seal, make sure that you have plenty of ventilation. In a tub like this, the lid is not at all airtight, though it does lock. It's relatively flexible on the sides. Keep in mind, if you do have a lid that flexes a lot, you might want to just put a weight on top of it. Babies aren't very strong, you don't need much to keep them in, just be mindful of that. And a couple of appropriate ventilation holes on the side. How many holes you need depends on how wide they are. You don't want so many that you can't maintain humidity in the tub, but you don't want so few that there might be not enough oxygen or airflow, or that your substrate stays particularly damp. You want it semi-damp, um, but not soaked. So inside of here, all we have is a nice little hide to keep the baby comfortable, random enrichment item, water dish, and about an inch or so of substrate. For substrate, I recommend something that's kind of coconut based. Uh, the reason being is that this stuff is not only very soft and comfortable and nice for them to dig in, and they do create trails and burrow in it quite a bit, um, it's also relatively bacteria and fungus resistant. So you can actually fill a tub with about an inch of substrate and it will last you for months. I have um, used Eco Earth ever since my 16 year old ball python was a hatchling, and I rarely have to change substrate more than every six months if I'm good at spot cleaning. If you leave urates or feces in there for a long period of time, or if you have excessive moisture, you'll have to change more often. But just be good about your spot cleaning. It should only be something you have to do every you know, week or so. You can also add other enrichment items, like leaves, and that will make them feel even more secure. I love fall, so I have fall leaves. Now what you want to keep in mind most for your enrichment items is you want it to be a transition for whatever kind of enclosure you're going to want to have them in. So if you want them to be climbing and you want them to be used to and accustomed to climbing, have something for them to climb on like a branch or a stick or something that is elevated off the ground. These uh, grapewood sticks are great because they're very bendy and they kind of elevate themselves. So those are perfect. For a little baby this is quite a bit of height. Uh, I would have, you know, multiple hides, different pieces of wood, and you can change out your enrichment items, you know, every couple of weeks, you know, provided they're not overwhelmed and they're handling everything well. Get them used to new stimuli. Another great thing about having a portable tub like this is that if you want to start um, socializing your baby to get used to you, you can bring this tub to wherever you are. You can have them sit next to you on the couch and just, without touching them, just have them either sit next to you or leave the tub open and let them decide if they want to interact with you or just get them used to seeing you and being around your scent, which is great for transitioning them as more of a social pet. Now for heating a tub like this, it's actually very simple. You just need two things, and that's a heat pad of appropriate size and wattage and a thermostat. You can get both of these things on Amazon relatively cheap. Um, a lot of pet stores, of course, have them, but you might pay a little bit more, it depends. You can actually get all of this relatively cheap. This whole setup should cost you, you know, less than $100, maybe like $60 to $75. If you do everything that I'm doing, like thermostat, heat pad, you know, enrichment items included. And some enrichment items, if you find them outside and you disinfect them properly, they're free. So you actually don't have to spend as much money. 
The awesome thing about having heating pads and thermostats as well is that you can essentially use them on anything. You're not just using them for your temporary tub. And a temporary tub is also good to have on hand because if you have to move your snake to do cleaning, you have to soak them if they're having difficulty shedding. Um, if you get a new baby and maybe you want to transition another snake, you have this tub, this setup, and you have the knowledge necessary to do that. Um, so for a heating pad, for something very small, say if I were using this tub, then a small heat pad like this would work. There are several brands that make them in various sizes. Tiny ones like this are very low wattage and may not need a thermostat. Now it is essential that when you set up any kind of heating element, do it before your baby arrives or before your snake arrives in general, and be sure to constantly be spot checking. You're gonna want a temp gun, something like this. You're going to love this thing and you're going to use it constantly. I got this on Amazon as well. Again, all very cheap stuff. Um, so it just has laser pointer to tell you where it's measuring and then it will tell you the relevant temperature. And you can set this to Fahrenheit or Celsius, there's various settings on these, but you really, like, you need one of these. You can't do without. So I recommend plugging in your heat pad if it's one of the smaller ones. Wait a day and then test it just to see what the baseline temperature is. Sometimes these don't reach more than the low 90s. And now when you're using a tub setup like this and you have a heating pad under it, keep in mind that the temperature on the surface of the heating pad will not be the temperature on top of the substrate where your baby sits. So you're going to want to test both. For example, I have um, a lot of heat mats on a lot of my other enclosures that are not part of my rack and I have them set to maybe 94 to 96 degrees depending on the season and the temperature of the room but the actual surface where the hot spot is that the snake sits is more like 88 so you're going to want to do testing when you use your thermostat you're going to have a probe now a lot of people just put the probe inside the enclosure and sit it somewhere where they want a particular temperature to be this is a terrible idea your snake is going to pull on the wire they're going to trample it and move it around and then that is very dangerous if you have a regular heat mat like this something that has much higher wattage it can reach dangerous temperatures if something goes off with the probe or if the probe is moved so instead what you're going to want to do is stick your heat mat partially under your tub you want to make sure that it only goes halfway so that you have a cool side and a warm side. This is very easy to do and if it's on the outside. You can have it as much under or as little as you want to adjust accordingly. You're going to want to attach your probe outside of the enclosure directly onto the heat mat. You can use electrical tape or metal tape. Either will work as long as it doesn't slide around. And then you can adjust your thermostat accordingly and see what temperature on your heat mat translates to an appropriate basking spot or hot spot. You want your hot spot to be around 87 to 89 degrees. I find 88 is perfect um, because then you don't really have to worry about getting too hot if they push a little bit of substrate out of the way and they're directly on the plastic. It's usually still not too hot, but again, you want to test. You want to test several times at several times of day with a temp gun. Um, just having like a little stick-on thermometer inside of the enclosure isn't going to do it or an air thermometer. You need a spot thermometer. Until you have your set up locked down and you know how your pad functions, you know how your thermostat functions and you find the sweet spot, give yourself a few days to conduct this test before your baby arrives because you don't want to figure out that things are too hot or too cold when the baby's already in there and you're worried about it. Another tip when you set up your uh, mini enclosure is that you just want to pour a little bit of water into the substrate just so you darken it slightly. You don't want it to be like so soaked that when you squeeze the substrate water comes out but you want it to be dampened and to feel a little bit you know feel a little moist but not super wet that will maintain plenty of humidity it's another great thing about these plastic tubs is they maintain humidity and temperature so super well and your baby's not going to have any trouble shedding but you'll know immediately you know a few weeks after you get your baby they'll probably go into their first shed with you and um, you'll know if something is wrong as far as humidity goes if it all comes off like a sock in one piece or if it comes out in little bits then you know whether or not you need to adjust your humidity you don't want to handle your hatchling your new arrival until they've eaten for you and they will most likely if they feel safe and secure eat for you about a week after they arrive for example I do weekends so if I were to get a snake on a Thursday I would wait till not that weekend but the following weekend to attempt a feeding because that gives them at least seven days to adjust their, to their new environment to feel secure cure and safe enough to eat because once a snake eats they're very vulnerable they can't move very quick which is why, um, it's because they can't get away when they have a full stomach so they need to feel safe and secure if your snake is not safe and secure they will not eat for you um, ball pythons get a little bit more resilient and mentally strong the older that they get they get more confidence you just have to be careful in those first few weeks first couple of months to make sure that everything is correct so check your parameters 
Make sure your humidity is on point, your water is fresh, that your baby is eating for you. Once your baby is eating for you once or twice, then you can begin handling. When you choose a time to handle, make sure that it's a couple of days after feeding. For example, if you feed on weekends like I do, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays are a good time to handle. You don't want to handle the day after a feeding, you don't want to handle the day of or maybe the day before because even just touching them, the day before you're going to feed them or the day of a feeding, they might feel that their environment is too insecure or too unsafe to eat and they might not eat for you. Something else that you may notice um, when you receive your new baby snake is that when you go to open the enclosure and you go to say hello to them or you know touch them, they might get into a striking posture. They may be sticking their little head out of their hide there, you know, waiting for food or getting ready to defend themselves. Understand this does not mean that your baby is mean or that it's aggressive or that there is anything wrong with what you're doing. Their survival instincts, especially in the first couple of months of life, is to be defensive and ensure that they make it through the first couple of months. That means they have strong survival instincts and it means your baby is more likely to succeed. They're not trying to be mean or attack you. They just want to make sure that either they're ready to defend themselves if they're going to be eaten or that they're ready to eat the next thing that walks by to ensure that they get those oh so essential calories. Alrighty, well hopefully this answers a lot of your questions and makes you feel confident about starting up your new hatchling or your new arrival. Um, if any of this was unclear or if you have questions, please uh, leave me a message or a comment. And I also intend to release other videos on care. This is just for starting up a new arrival or a new hatchling. So um, thanks so much for watching and best of luck with your new snake and I'll see you in the next one.